All right, we are back, folks. Welcome to livecoding.ca. My name is Nick Taylor. I'm a staff software engineer at Netlify, and welcome. Uh, flying solo today. Um, uh, as you can see by the title, uh, I'm going to just go through just some debugging in Node.js and uh, Dino. Um, I, I still. I still see folks sometimes like when I open up the debugger that they're they're surprised you can do that and I'm not saying everybody but uh, usually there's like one person like oh my god uh, I didn't realize you could use uh, a debugger and stuff so um, it's gonna just kind of be not too deep a dive I mean we'll see how it goes I guess but um, just want to show you some tools that you have available to you for Node.js and Dino um, and if you're not sure what Dino is, uh, Dino, I just dropped a link to it, is the, uh, it's, it's a, it's, think of it as like, maybe not the successor to Node.js, but it's, uh, it's from this, the creator of Node.js, um, and there's a talk, uh, he wrote, or sorry, he gave called, uh, 10 things I regret about Node.js. I'm going to just try and find that, should have had that ready, but. Uh, give me two seconds to find it. The, oh yeah, here it is. Uh, there's a talk. Of course, that probably just came blurring out. Sorry about that. Um, okay, so let's drop that in here. So here's the talk from Ryan Dahl about uh, Dino. But uh, basically, Dino, it's, it's built in Rust. It's still using uh, V8 under the hood, um, which is uh, what Node.js is built with too. And it's also what any Chromium based browser uses uh, in terms of the JavaScript uh, runtime. So yeah, um, so that's how they're all kind of connected. And it's kind of important to know that because um, if you're front end dev, you you may have, but you may not have used the debugger. So uh, what I want to first do is actually just give you a little peek of what the debugger is. So um, I'm on dev two here. Uh, just because uh, the thing I'm gonna debug is something I built on there when I was still working there. So uh, let's take a peek here now. So what I'm gonna do is, so just to explain what's gonna happen here, I'm on an article page on Dev2. And if you look down here, okay, I picked a super long article. It's by Rizal, by the way, so check that out. Um, there's a subscribe button in when I subscribe, it'll also, it'll switch to like unsubscribe and so on. But what I want to show you is the debugger in action. So I'm going to click subscribe here and then you see it says unsubscribed. Um, so now let's refresh the page and okay, you're going to see here what's going on here. So right now we are in, whoops, we are in the JavaScript debugger in I'm in Edge right now, but it's a Chromium based browser. You can debug in Firefox as well, but it's not using uh, Chromium under the hood. Um, but what I want to show you here is, so you have these debugging tools that you can use in the front end and you may have seen these before, you may have not. Um, there's a bunch of things you can do here, but right away out of the bat, uh, out of the gate here, I should say, um, I'm using a breakpoint here. If you're not familiar with breakpoints are, it, you can literally just put, think of it like a little bookmark in code where you want the program to stop if you have the debugger running. And they kind of look like little bookmarks, at least in uh, Chromium based. Um, so some interesting things here are like, you can definitely do console logs or similar things like console.table, console.dir, you know, so like if we come here, you know, console.log, YOLO, you know, and it's going to output something and you can put those in your code. And, you know, a lot of times, uh, you know, those are good enough when you kind of know what's going on and you just want to see, did it hit here or something? But sometimes, at least for me, when I don't know the code base well at all yet, and I'm not really sure what's going on, I actually like to stop in the code and kind of see what's going on. So that's what I've done here. So I've hit a breakpoint that I created myself. And you're just going to notice a few things in here right away that you have access to. And I know we're talking about f debugging the front end right now, but it relates to when we get to uh, debugging Node and Dino. So, uh, but there's a lot of things in here. So you, you can have this panel here on the, on the right that has a scope, 
shows you know like currently what this is equal to um, this is react component so there's props and it's showing you what all the props are and there's some functions here which are props and so on there's a lot of information is what I'm getting at there's a call stack so you can actually see where things got called some of this stuff it's it's hitting webpack stuff right now but um, if I go back to the original one here um, uh, let's see here uh, I could probably put it into let's see here okay so I'm gonna let this run page is gonna load I'm gonna click unsubscribe and when I do that it's unsubscribe now I'm gonna subscribe again and it should stop at line 42 or am I at the wrong, <laughs> I'm at the wrong one okay wait a minute here da, da, da. let's see here set state okay yeah let's just put it in here okay if I'm logged in sure okay and if I'm not subscribed so I'm gonna unsubscribe here so I've clicked you can see here the click events happened and you know you can see the in the call stack here it stopped at on click which is where we are but then if I go into the on subscribe uh, it, it's this prop that got passed in you can see there was the on click but then I can go to where the actual on click uh, prop is and so on and this is kind of neat because you can kind of go back in the call stack and um, you can't always do it but you can actually kind of time travel back you can say like restart from a frame which is kind of interesting too um, but the main point here is you have this debugger and there's a bunch of things you can do in here uh, aside from just stopping at code other things you can do for example is if we get out of here let's go back to this one here so let's see here I'm gonna put on the click here so all right so uh, if I'm logged in else okay yeah so I'm gonna log out of dev2 for a second here let's just get this running do, do, do. And I, I gave a couple talks on this, um, but I didn't feel like I had enough time. And the, the last talk I did about this, I kind of talked about a bunch of tools, so I really didn't have enough time. So I, I thought the stream would be a good way to just kind of go through some of this stuff. So I'm going to log out of Dev2 here. Okay, yes, sign out. Okay, let's just go back to an article. So I'm hitting the debugger again. Now there's some other interesting things you can do here. So let's remove all these. Let's come back to here. So I'm gonna put a breakpoint here and say, I'm gonna edit it. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make this a conditional breakpoint, meaning you can put some kind of expression like you would write in JavaScript. So I'm gonna say, um, let's, uh, maybe not there, but let's see here. I'm gonna say, when I'm logged in, I want it to break here. So let's edit breakpoint. And you could obviously put a breakpoint inside the if here, but it's just more to show what some things you can do. So I'm just gonna say is logged in. So if it's true, this will this breakpoint will stop. And you're gonna see here the breakpoint changes color and it's got a question mark now. So it's uh, just showing that it's a conditional breakpoint. Um, and then I'm just going to put this one here now. So I'm not logged in right now. So if I come down here, let's just let this run through. I, I'm going to have that subscribe button still. I'm going to click on it and it should stop at the blue breakpoint. Now it's stopping here because I'm not logged in, which is great. But you notice how it didn't stop on the if is logged in. It's because is logged in is false right now. So I'm just going to click F8 to continue. So I'm going to log in gonna log in with forum it's just another way you can log into forum okay so now I'm back here and let's click on this subscribe button again okay why did it not click there ah, is logged in when does this click Wait, unsubscribe no okay now I'm doubting myself here maybe my condition is wrong hold on a sec here let's just put this true Okay, and then let's say subscribe. Okay, so is logged in is true. Maybe I typed it wrong. Let's edit that again, paste that in. Okay, conditional breakpoint, so it should stop when it's true. All right, let's try this again. Unsubscribe, subscribe. Okay, <laughs> what's going on? Uh, 
Okay, well, anyways, regardless of what's going on right now, the point is is logged in if it's true it should stop here like basically any condition it should stop here and why it is not i shouldn't have to do this but i'm just gonna try again unsubscribe no subscribe let's move the break point down here maybe oh well that's the joys of live coding but um let's see here subscribe okay and unsubscribe Okay, I clearly don't know why it's not stopping, but you can have conditional breakpoints is my main point. Uh, the other things you can do is if you come in here, like let's put up here. It doesn't matter where you put this, but you know how we were doing console logs before. You can also do that with uh, within the code in the debugger without actually littering your code. So if I say edit breakpoint, I can come here and I can say make a log point and I can do a message like, Hello stream. Now it's a different color and I'm going to come to the console and let's refresh. And it says hello stream. So it's kind of cool because you're not littering your actual code with uh, console logs. You're just doing it when you're in the context of the debugger, which is kind of nice. And they get preserved as well, unless you remove it, obviously. Um, there's a bunch of other things in here, but I just wanted to show you first that if one, if you haven't seen the debugger before for front end, uh, you can definitely use it. It's available in Firefox too, but it's a, it's different because it's not uh, Chromium based, but for uh, Node.js and Dino, it's using the same debugging, uh, which is why I wanted to start off with the front end debugging. So now we're going to come in and let's go over to VS code here and I'm just going to create a new project. So let's go to my dev folder. Okay. Let's go to make their demos. Sure. Okay. It already exists. Okay, cool. All right. Uh, what's in here already. Okay. It's empty. All right. Uh, let us make a new project. So make dir. let's do debugging stream. Let's go in there. Let's just do a git init and I'll do an NPM init, uh, with all the defaults, but I don't think we're really going to install anything here. But what I want to show now is let's open up the project. Yeah, that's good. Okay. So we got an empty project here. Uh, there's package JSON that I created, but let's create a file. So let's create, um, let's just say code. Uh, let's do node demo.js and we're going to say console.log your in the node.js debugger. And then I don't know, let's put something like just do something pretty simple. Let's just say I equals one. And I don't know, let's, we'll just, we'll console log it out, but this is like super boring stuff, but that's not the point of this. Um, okay. So now if you come to the terminal and I have node installed already, if you don't have node, you can install node, just go to the node.js org and you can download the latest or you can install a version manager like NVM or N, uh, but I'm going to run this uh, code here and it should say you're in the node.js debugger and then console log out the number one, which is expected. Uh, even though it's console logs, you're in the node.js debugger, we're not in the node.js debugger yet, but uh, now what we're going to do is uh, Node.js provides a thing here where you can do node no, uh, node dash dash inspect dash brk. So that just means I want to inspect the code and I want to break right away before it starts running. And the reason why you want to do inspect dash brk, at least right now, is because I don't know what the code's doing theoretically. Um, so I just want to start the debugger and have it pause right away. So I'm going to run this and you're going to see here that it's saying there's a debugger listening and that's great. Okay. I'm going to come back to edge, which I'm in and you're going to notice something that wasn't there before. There's this 
green Node.js icon now. So now just let me remove that. If I click on this, all of a sudden I'm debugging Node.js in the browser debugger tools. It's not so much the browser debugging debugger, it's really the V8 debugger, I guess. Uh, the runtime for JavaScript, uh, which is running Chromium based browsers as well as Node.js. So you can see in here, so all the stuff I was showing you briefly before, even the conditional breakpoint that wasn't working. I think when I showed this last time somewhere, it wasn't working either. I don't know what's up. I'm going to have to practice that before I join, do a stream, I guess. Um, but you're going to see here, I have all the same tools. So I can put a breakpoint. So if I just continue to run the debugger, and in terms of going to the next lines and stuff, there's these buttons on the right here. There's a play button. There's like a step over, step into, step out. You can use those buttons, but I typically use the uh, function keys. So for stepping through code, like if I just want it to run, you press F8. So it's gonna run and it's gonna stop at the debugger. And again, we have all the same tooling that we had before from the debugger when we were debugging front end code. So I can see what the current this is, some information about the module I'm in. I is currently undefined. Um, so if I step over this now, you're going to see I is equal to one. And there's a bunch of stuff in the call stack here, which is node internal stuff. But if we had a function and stuff, you could see it in the call stack, which we can try actually. Um, but, uh, the main point here is the same debugger you can use to debug front end code in Chromium based browsers is the same debugger that you can use for Node.js. So now I'm just going to let this run and it's done. Um, okay. So let's close that. And you're going to see now that green Node.js icon I was talking about before it's gone. It's this uh, grayed out thing here. And if I come back here, you're gonna see that it disconnected, or at least it looks like it did. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a function just for funsies. And uh, let's call it greeting. Thank you, GitHub Copilot. Sure. And we'll just say greeting here. And let's say Nick. And then we don't need this anymore. Okay, so I'm gonna save that and I'm gonna start up the debugger again. So again, it tells you, and I'll just bump this a bit. Um, it's gonna tell you that the debugger is listening on this WebSocket port. Uh, this is like a unique uh, UUID, I think that just gets generated for every debugging session. But if we come back to the dev tools here, you're gonna see that green Node.js icon again. So I'm gonna click on that. Now I'm using inspect break so it's stopping in the code right away. So this is the first line. The function's there, but the actual first line of code that's going to run is line five. So you can see it's stopped there. I'm gonna just add the console below here so you can see some stuff there. I'll zoom in a bit here. Uh, it should be, it's kind of big, but there, that should be okay. It's a little chunky, but all right. So now I'm gonna step over the code here. And you're going to see it. you're in the Node.js debugger gets logged out again. Now we're going to go and console log this greeting. So I'm going to step into the code. So that's I'm using F11, but you can use the, the uh, buttons up here on the right if you want to. And so you can see in here already name is Nick, which is being passed in. And then it's going to return this value here. And what's interesting now is if we look, you see here before, I was at the console log and then you can see in the call stack, it's going to the next thing, which is the greeting. And then uh, it's going to build that string here. And then if I step out of here, it's going to, it's got this value now. So hello, Nick. And then when I step over this code, you're going to see it says hello, Nick down below. It's uh, I've I'm just going to drag this up a bit, but you can see it says hello, Nick there. So. I'm not going into anything super complex here, but it's just to show you that these tools are here. So, okay, that's great. Um, so we've got a debugger. We know how to stop and stuff. Um, let's try something different. So let's let this run and whoops, let's come here. Okay. This time I'm going to put a debugger statement. So you can use an explicit debugger sometimes. 
Um, so I'm going to put that in there and I'm going to do something different here now. Instead of inspect dash BRK, which means to break at the first line of code that Node.js is going to run, I'm just going to say inspect. And I'm going to come here and okay, yeah, no, I didn't have a debug. Oh yeah, it already ran. Yeah, see that's that's the reason why I was using the inspect break. Um, so it just it stopped right away. Um, but if I come over here, yeah, you see it's already dead. So if I close this, yeah, it's all gray again. So I typically use the inspect break. Um, we're gonna we're gonna talk about VS Code shortly. Um, but before we do that. Uh, oh yeah, I'm not sharing the code. Thanks, Brittany. <laughs> I, I got too involved in chatting. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Thanks. Okay. So all that stuff I've been saying, okay, we'll, we'll go over that real quick again then. <laughs> Thanks for posting that, Brittany. I got a, I got a little too involved in just talking there. Uh, cool. Cool. Thank you. Chat. All right. Uh, okay, so all that stuff you heard me talking about, I'll just show it to you again. Um, okay, so yeah, so what I was saying before here, so let's start up the debugger again. And I'm glad Brittany said that now, instead of somebody coming in at the, mentioning it at the end of the stream saying, oh yeah, thank you for talking, but we never saw anything. Um, <laughs> so, okay, so I'm going to start Node again with the debugger. Uh, starting, but it's gonna it's gonna break on the first line with the using the dash dash inspect dash brk. So I'm gonna run the node demo again. It's gonna say here again debugger is listening on this WebSocket port, and I'm gonna come back to here, and you're gonna see the green Node.js uh, icon, which you haven't seen for the last ten minutes because I've been <laughs> just showing my face. So I'm gonna click on this here uh, again just to repeat what I've been doing, but you're going to see here, it stops on the first line of the code. And again, just to reiterate, we're using the same debugger that you would use in front end code to debug Node.js code. Uh, you can also do this in VS code, which I'll show shortly, but um, yeah, I just wanted to show, so you can, you have the breakpoints here, like I could put a breakpoint here and if I just let it run, it's going to stop right there. Uh, I could um, I have the explicit debugger now because I put that in when I was trying to show something a second ago. So if I let this run, it's going to stop when it sees the debugger keyword. Um, so now it's, it's just halted the, not halted the program. It's just temporarily paused. And you're going to see here again, what I was talking about the call stack. Uh, if I come back here, this anonymous, uh, call here, that's what the console log is. And then the next thing in the call stack is the greeting function being called and it's currently paused at the debugger, like I mentioned. So I'm going to step over that. And then at this point, it's returning the value hello. Uh, we don't see that yet, but now if I run this, I'm just going to open up the uh, console again here and I'm going to let that run. And you're going to see it says hello, Nick. So uh, now you can actually see the, uh, the debugger because I was showing my screen. Anyways, um, so to wrap up briefly for this part, the debugger that you can use for front end development for JavaScript is the same debugger that you can use for Node.js. Now, another interesting thing you can do is you can actually use VS Code to do debugging as well. And this is possible because of something called the remote debugging protocol. I'm going to just Google that and drop that. Uh, Chrome Dev Tools protocol. It's kind of a lengthy read potentially, but I'll drop it anyways. Also, thanks for saying hi, Brittany. Uh, I added uh, a emoji new thing to my stream. It does, it does confetti now. Uh, it only does it every minute though. So, and it, it changes um, over every time you press it. Um, anyways, okay. So I'm going to debug out of VS code now. So there's a few things here. If you look in your terminals here and I'm, you know, regardless of what theme you have, it'll be in here. Uh, when you have the integrated terminal, if you open it up uh, and I can't zoom in this part just cause it's a native component. So apologies, the rest is all web-based, but, um, there's an option to choose a JavaScript debug terminal. 
and you can see that running here. I'll try and zoom that in a bit. I'll close the sidebar. So it says JavaScript debug terminal. And I'm at a, a shell again, a shell prompt. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do the same thing I was doing before, which is I'm going to run node. But instead of adding the debugger explicitly, I'm going to put a breakpoint like we were doing in the browser before, or sorry, in the browser dev, or sorry, in the debugger that is exposed in the browser dev tooling. And I'm going to put a breakpoint in VS Code. So they look different, but it's the same idea. And, uh, oh, cool. That's, uh, that's awesome. You're setting up for your first stream, uh, Brittany, if you have any questions, uh, f feel free to hit me up. Uh, uh, my first stream started off. It was literally, and also honestly just start streaming. You know, you don't need a fancy setup. I mean, my setup is pretty decent now, but when I first started, it was literally a webcam black background on my stream and I shared my screen. That was it. Uh, so just just start streaming is all I'd say and you'll you'll learn over time and uh, you, You'll develop a checklist and stuff uh, All right. Anyways, I'm in the JavaScript debug terminal now I've added a breakpoint here and I'm just gonna run node uh, with that same file and All of a sudden I'm in VS code and I'm getting the same experience that uh, You were seeing in the browser before and another thing that's going to be interesting is I'll try and put it side by side. I'm on a wide monitor, so I have for the stream, at least I have part of my screen crop, but let's close this. Um, is it going to open there? Maybe it will. Maybe it won't. I've, oh no, it won't do it that way. It's because I started it through the VS code thing. I'll show it after with another way. Um, but anyways, again, you have all the same tools. There's this debug bar up here. I'm just going to move it over. Um, but you have the same things like you did before. There's the call stack. Um, I can debug. I'm going to use the arrow, sorry, the function keys again to do this. But, you know, I'm going to step in here again. You can go to the call stack. You see it highlights where this was called. And then it's going to go to where I'm currently calling things. And it's essentially the same experience that you saw in the, in the debugger in the browser. Um, for backend code, I... I kind of prefer to be in VS code because that's where I'm writing things. You can also set this up with front end code to debug in here as well. Uh, I'm still, I'm still on the fence about that. I like my, my ideal is to be able to just have all this. I basically want VS code with a browser <laughs> is what I want. And they do have that like an extension and like a simple browser thing right now, but I really do want that. Like, I feel like, the edge team is probably just going to embed VS code at some point in the debugger tools. I don't know. Maybe that's just me wishful thinking, but, uh, but anyways, it's all the same tooling. So you have, you know, your variables here, the call stack, you can see what's in the global, just like we saw before. Everything's kind of scrunched up here cause I've got it zoomed in for the stream. So folks can see things, but that's just to show you that you, uh, like you can get up and running with a debugger super quickly in VS code. If you just choose the JavaScript debug terminal. So I'm going to let this run. I'll press the play button for fun. I usually use the error, my function keys, like I said. Okay. So the program's done. Okay. Now there's another way that you can actually debug in VS code as well. Uh, this way you, the way I'm going to show, you don't really need to do it typically now that there is the JavaScript debug terminal, but there could be reasons why you still want to do it. Um, so if you come into the debugging panel over here, um, there's the JavaScript debug terminal, like I just mentioned. Um, but let's come here and I'm going to say, create a launch JSON file. I'm going to choose Node.js, and it's okay. I'm just going to hide things for a sec here cause it's kind of crowded in here. Okay. This is not the one I want, but we could use this like this will, uh, when I run this, it'll start my code. Like if I uh, might as well show it, I guess. So if I run the debugger, it should start my code right away. And this is something that you just choose it from the configurations that VS code gives you and boom, you're off to the races. Now this is great when you literally want to start the debugger right away in something, but maybe sometimes you'll have something running. Cause like, you know, you've been working in it, things are looking great, but then all of a sudden you're like, okay, something's going wrong. I want to attach the debugger now. 
So another way you can do this is with another configuration. So if we come here, just click on the add configuration button and you're gonna choose Node.js again, but you're gonna say attach to process. And I'm gonna save that. Now, what you're gonna notice here at the top right of VS Code is there's two options now. Launch program is that first configuration I showed you that just started uh, things and just attached right away. I uh, kind of like the JavaScript debug terminal. The other one is attach by process ID, and I'm gonna show you how that one works. So let's open up here again, and I'm gonna do node, but I'm gonna do inspect break again. And okay, so it's gonna say it's listening. Okay, so there's gonna be a few things here. I'm gonna say attach to process. I'm gonna click the green play button. And all of a sudden you're gonna see these node processes. Uh, I probably should have changed themes. I'm using Fortnite, which is a little darker. Yeah, no, see you later, Brittany. Um, but uh, I'm gonna choose the one that is currently debugging, which is the first one in the list here. So I'm gonna click on it. And then all of a sudden I'm attached to the debugger again. Now, what's interesting here is now you're gonna see that I have the debugger is enabled here too, because if we, let me shrink this a bit, because the debugger is still listening. So I'm gonna say, let's attach the debugger. And you're gonna see both side by side here now. I'm gonna just try and shrink this a bit. All right, let's do that. Okay, now what? this is what I mean about the remote debugging. So it's basically wherever the debugger is attached, all of them are gonna run. So I'm gonna step through the code in the browser dev tooling, but you see how it's changing in VS Code as well. Um, let me just hide the side here and like really put them side by side for a sec. Okay, let's do this. Okay, so now I'm gonna say, let's step into that greeting function. And then you see here, it they're going side by side. And that's possible because of the remote debugging protocol that I dropped the link to. Like I said, it's super long to read about, but in a nutshell, it just allows you to have the debugger be consumed by whatever wants to consume it. In this case, VS Code is doing that. So that's another way you can do things. And let's let that run to end here. Okay, so now it's all done. That's cool. All right. Okay, so that's a few ways you can do things. I'm just gonna resize this and let's come back here, resize that. Okay, that's all good. Now we're gonna do, uh, I guess I'll show you what you can do with Dino. So Dino, it's a little different pretty close to the same. So you're just gonna switch this to Dino and I'm gonna run the same thing. And, oh no, sorry, there is, that's the slight difference. I did this last time too. It's Dino uh, run, I believe. Yeah, okay, so now we're running Dino. I have Dino installed as well. Again, if you're interested in Dino, uh, I dropped the link to it again. Dino under the hood, it's so it's written in Rust. Um, you can use TypeScript or JavaScript, but under the hood, even if you're using TypeScript, it compiles it down and it runs it in V8, which again is the runtime that runs in Chromium. It's what's running in VS Code, uh, which is an Electron app. And it's also uh, what's running in the browser. So. Now I'm gonna come back to the browser again and you're gonna see that same green again. And then I'm literally in the same tools again. Uh, I'm not gonna go through the same things again, but you know, I can step through and then I'll just let it run and it's done. But that was Dino code now. And there you go, it's all done. Um, and just like VS Code did for um, uh, Node.js, there's no, right now at least, there's no, you know, Dino debug terminal. I feel like that'll probably show up at some point, but uh, for now there doesn't appear to be one. But if we come to the debug configurations, and oh, where is it? Sorry, here. Uh, yeah, so let's come here and let's just hide stuff again. And let's just say add another configuration and Dino should be in here somewhere. Or I did see it somewhere. Uh, where was it? Add a configuration, Dino. Why am I not seeing it? 
interesting i th it showed up before but let me just delete i don't know if it's because this file is here already but i'm gonna delete this just for a second and let's go to the debugger again and run and debug okay and it says dino okay i haven't really used this one yet but i don't see that as an option hmm. okay uh, i'm not so positive about dino in vs code but i'm pretty sure i think it's the extension that provides that i'm gonna have to look into that more but um the main point is uh that the same tooling that you use to debug the front end is the same tooling for the debugger at least uh, that you can use for Node.js and it's also the same debugger that you can use for Dino and this is really nice and I think you know the the creator of uh, Dino who also created Node.js probably just went that route because like all this tooling is already available so I think that's pretty smart on, on Ryan Dahl's part there. Um, that's essentially it. I'm not, like I said, this wasn't like a super deep dive and it's not a super long stream today. Uh, I'm actually a little, a little tired this week. Uh, not, not from work. It's just, I, I work out Monday, Wednesday, Fridays, and, uh, I had a pretty killer workout this morning and, uh, my legs are kind of dead. Haven't said that though. Um, yeah, it was just really a quick overview to show you some of the debugging tools that are out there available to you. So um, before we wrap things up, uh, I'm just going to mention again. So you can use the debugger in the Chromium-based browsers for front-end code. You can also use it for Node.js and Dino. Uh, in terms of VS Code, you can also use it to debug front-end code. It's uh, The setup is it's a little maybe not more involved but uh, i didn't go through it because it's not what i was going to talk about today but you can you can debug front end code in vs code as well as we saw we can easily debug node.js uh, just by using the javascript debug terminal or by adding a debug configuration whether it's the attached to process or just start node right away you can do it with Dino as well. I haven't really tried it in VS Code yet. I probably should have tried that before the stream. But I think if you have the Dino extension, which I believe I do have, if I just look here. Yeah, Dino. Yeah. Okay, I do have it installed. Yeah, so there's debuggers. No. Okay, that's not what I meant. Um, I'm pretty sure it's the Dino extension that... Uh, adds that debugger to it. I'm going to have to look into that a little more, uh, honestly. Um, but there's that too. Um, so yeah, it's just a quick whirlwind tour of, you know, places where you can use the debugger, just in case you weren't aware. Or if you were aware, maybe you learned a couple things about uh, using the debugger in VS Code. Um, like I said, I'm a little wiped out today, so just keeping it short today. Um, but I will mention uh, Becca Harrett Weigel, a good friend of mine, is on the stream next week. And we're going to be using the DeepGram. Uh, she works at DeepGram. And we're going to be building something with uh, the DeepGram Node SDK, I believe. So check that out next week. And aside from that, I'll give uh, one thing that I've got going on next week. Uh, there's front end test fest going on. I'll drop a link here. Um, it's happening June 23rd. Uh, let me drop that just so you can see, I'll see it. Uh, let's close that. Bye bye. No debugger. Uh, let's close that. Boom. It's in my tweet here. But anyways, uh, going on next week, uh, Wednesday. I believe it's no, when, no, Thursday, June 23rd, I think it is. Let me double check that. Yeah, it's Thursday. So Thursday, June 23rd, next week, there's Front End Test Fest. It's, uh, it's presented by Apply Tools and Netlify where I work. And I'm going to be on a, a panel there talking about training tools and frameworks. But there's lots of other great talks going on there. So check that out. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it, folks. I will see you all next week.